Since the first presidential debate referred to Big Bird, I thought, I thought in that fine tradition, I would give a talk which referenced Sesame Street. So this afternoon's talk is brought to you courtesy of the verb to accelerate and the letter C. But before I go on to the next part of the talk, I would like some audience participation. It's all about interactivity in the digital age. So I would like you, before I start this next piece, which I think will frame the talk, to clap rather than the style, you know the Olympics, right? So you've got people that clap on the way up the long jump, the guy's running up and it's like clap, 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 clap. I'm going to ask you, in a short moment, to clap rhythmically, and then when the fever pitch has been brought right up, I will stop and begin the piece to introduce the talk. <laughs> can we all do that? Can, can, can we all do that? Yes. There we go. Okay, so here we go, here we go. <laughs> well, I've a hell of a terrible need. See, I never move at less than incredible speed. I use several chemicals, never the weed. And I'm living life as high as my medical fees. I never hesitate, never meditate, never get up late. If I get a message on my Facebook, never let it wait. I accelerate, I accelerate, I accelerate, I accelerate, I... Never cook or bake, I stick a plate in the microwave. Always make complaints if delayed in a minor way. On the plane, train, always on the internet. iTunes, buy music, soon into dirt. <laughs> in their bed, some can't sheep in the night sky to fall asleep. But me, I'm dreaming of Wi-Fi. <laughs> Why I might try eBay or Amazon, my salary is gone, but I carry on. I accelerate, I accelerate, I accelerate. Better pace equals better pay, better place. I'm a renegade, I'm a renegade, I'm a renegade. No, Musa, you're a rat who will ever race, ever race, ever race, ever race. No, <laughs> no, I accelerate, I accelerate. I will never change. I accelerate, I accelerate. I excel, all right? I excel, all right? I excel, all right? <sighs> so, I accelerate. Who remembers a dance move called The Running Man? Hands up. <laughs> Who doesn't remember that dance? OK, quick demonstration for you, 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 you. <laughs> the Running Man, you get the left leg or the right leg, whatever foot you are, and you move forward in a certain motion. Now, I'm going to ask you, it's not a trick question, afterwards, what is special about The Running Man? OK, right. This is The Running Man. <laughs> this is The Running Man. <laughs> I thought I'd give you two angles, you know, interactive, all that, right? <laughs> Hands up, what's special about the running man? Yeah. Right. Absolutely, you don't move, okay? I'm living a hamster lifestyle, okay? This is not progression. This is caffeine. <laughs> now, here's the thing. I've been thinking about this. I'm accelerating. We're all accelerating somewhere or another. Technology, it's great, fantastic. Beyond borders, we're reaching out. Connecting, all the rest of it, right? Fantastic. What are we accelerating towards? And if we are hamsters, who owns the wheel? So, the verb to accelerate. The letter C. Three Cs. The first C is confinement. We're here to talk about borders, but the very same people, this is the great irony, the very same people telling us to innovate, 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 branch out, branch out, branch out, think outside the box, are getting us to think inside the box. My life used to be broad. There's a diary here, there was a pen here, there was this, that. All of a sudden, I'm thinking inside the box. It shrunk. It's very bizarre. Recently, I was reading a book um, by Eli Parasa called The Filter Bubble. And the book is about, effectively, the fact that we are being sold back the same things that we already know are like. Now, on one level, superficial level, I've been dating recently. <laughs> Guardian soulmates. And you put in a few details, and it throws back some examples of people that you should fall in love with or whatever, blah, 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 according to some algorithm. Now, the thing is, I don't have a clue who I'm looking for. And I can pretty much guarantee the person I find will not be the person recommended. Because part of the fun of love, of romance, is being completely wrong about the person you're after. <laughs> That's part of the fun. My first girl from university, absolutely amazing woman, amazing woman. I was in the same college as her for an entire year. 
I didn't notice her. It was only when we went to this one party and she was dressed in angel wings that I just <laughs> fell for her. <laughs> True story. Still angelic, not with me. True story. Still angelic. <laughs> so that's one C to be careful about, the confinement aspect. So if we're not getting the spontaneity online, we must find it elsewhere. Now, romance isn't the only place where that's a problem. If you look at the recent coverage of Syria, for example, in one aspect of the media, it's very much about Assad being a dictator who is dangerous, devilish to his own people. And so much of that is true. I don't dispute any of that. The problem has come also that we have the Free Syrian Army, and no one really knew who they were, and they were being marketed very aggressively by many sections of the media as unequivocally a good force. And it's turned out, actually, the reporting, very reporting people like Alex Thompson, for example, at Channel 4, they're a very different force. And the nuanced analysis is something that I had to find in a completely different silo of media. So the danger I'm finding, we talk about being beyond borders, at the same time that we're trying to branch out in this room, and it's fantastic, we're being constrained by external forces we don't, we're not aware of. That's the first C. The second C is the civil liberties. My concern at the moment, there's a communication data bill sitting about. Who's heard of this bill? Henry Porter has written a fantastic piece, as has Nick Cohen more recently on this bill. This bill will potentially give the government access to all your electronic communications. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a pretty big concern. And that is not, to me, a borderless society. At the same time, we're accelerating towards it. So if you see this bill anywhere, this communications data bill, there's anything you take from this talk is that that bill is pure evil. Yeah. Now, it's very rare that we say a pure evil, right? We see pure evil. We saw Bane in that film. Even Bane was quite nice. He was quite nice. But, you know, he cried, didn't he? He was quite nice. Skeletor is pure evil. Right, Skeletor is pure evil. But this bill, this bill is actual, pure, unequivocal evil. And it's not fictional. It's not wearing a purple cloak. It's real. It's out there. And we must, we must crush it. We must kill it. The third C, censorship. Now, you may know the story of April Jones. April Jones, very sad, uh, this young girl, abducted, most probably murdered, body still not found. And Matthew Wood, you may know that story too, thrown in jail for three months for making offensive comments on his Facebook page. Disgusting comments, absolutely disgusting, revolting comments, revolting comments. At the same time, a boy who put insensitive, hateful, disgusting graffiti on his Facebook wall is now in jail for three months. This, ladies and gentlemen, is not a borderless society. But we are accelerating towards it. So I implore you all, if you have the chance, next few months and years, if this talk's anything at all, when you're accelerating, take a look in the rearview mirror, Put the brakes on, pull over, have a very careful think. Thank you.